Today, I am presenting different techniques of thulium laser prostatectomy. Albert Einstein nearly a century ago in the year 1919 mentioned the possibility of laser, but it was not until 90s of the earlier century that laser in the form of holmium was in clinical use for the treatment of prostate and suddenly a long due alternative of as old TURP started gaining momentum. As you all know that laser is amplified beam of light which is robustly powerful. Laser exerts its clinical effect by photomechanical and photothermal and it is the latter through which it works on soft tissues like prostate. We have all the options of laser and there is monopolar and bipolar TURP, monopolar and bipolar enucleation. Confused? So many other things to learn too, like laparoscopy, reconstructive technique. Then we have the CAB, CAA and of late the Corona to fight too. So how much time we can dedicate to a procedure which I think everyone is doing and all the new graduates to learn as it is the bread and butter technique, I think. So I place to go for the easiest to learn and master. This continuous and pulse wave laser with a penetration depth of 0.2 millimeter has wavelength similar to water leading to rapid absorption by tissue water and instant vaporization and excellent hemostasis. Except portability and lithotripsy, thulium has all the advantages as mentioned in a review article by our Pankaj Maheshwari sir in the Indian Journal of Urology in a review article in 2013. As you all know, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, commonly known as BPH, it is a nightmare disease of elderly male. Sir Benjamin Brody so well described it to be the part and parcel of aging process when he described when the hair becomes scant and gray, when specks of artimeter begin to be deposited in the tunics of artery, and when a white zone is formed at the margin of the cornea, at the same period, the prostate gland usually, I might perhaps say, invariably becomes increased in size. <clears throat> well, we'll come to it one by one. First, the advantages of thulium laser. Yes, it has definite advantages. Laser, as you all know that it is hemostatic, safe in cardiopulmonary instability and in patient on antiplatelet drugs. Most important point regarding the, this laser is short learning curve. No learning curve at all if you only do vaporization technique. Yes, we have performed few cases under local anesthesia too by doing rapid vaporization who were totally unfit for any kind of anesthesia. Only the laser working element. That's all you need extra in your tolly to the normal TUR instruments. Small video clip of thulium laser vaporization for smaller prostate and in the early part of laser experience it is the procedure to be done. No set rules as you can just start vaporizing at a higher setting of more than 100 but at the bladder neck and near veromontanum where the power setting should be near 60 watt. Need to make a fossa more time consuming compared to other technique in larger prostates but you have the advantage of working in a near bloodless field
Yes, it is the easiest among all techniques. Better result in small adenoma. Near bloodless field, you can avoid cost, risk and expertise of morcellation. In this 2014 article in Journal of Endurology by Parisher J.J. et al. concluded it to be the safe and effective technique with a durable result at three months. Low complication with excellent hemostasis with promising clinical improvement was concluded in Journal of Endurology in the same year by different author. Coming to vaporization, section, you can do a trilobe technique or a bilobe technique. Trilobe technique, very good technique. Anyone can start this technique after 10 to 15 vaporization procedure. It is easier for better appreciation, but if there is a big median low, it should be done and it should be preferred to a bilobe technique. Incision starts at, as you can see, uh, the incision starts from the bladder neck at 5 and 7 o'clock position to the level of Bhairu Mantanam. Then start developing the plan with mechanical force resecting and vaporizing when required. Morcellation is not a must as you can see the median lobe could be vaporized in no time. Then the inverted U-shaped incision which can be made at the outset or after completely resecting the median lobe. The inverted U-shaped incision as you can see. Then joining at the roof. After that, you can make the 12 o'clock incision and then start resecting either from proximally from the 12 o'clock position laterally or from the level of Bhairantanam laterally. Beautiful technique, you can work in a near bloodless field. The advantage of this technique is that if there is any residual tissue you can see you can vaporize instantly here i am vaporizing after resecting the left lateral lobe still it is attached with a stock at the level of blood and neck so in this technique again you can see the right lobe advantage of this technique is that morcellation is not a must as you can see uh, very good prosthetic fossa and no bleeding at all this is a bilobe technique where incision is made from the bladder neck at six o'clock and then 12 o'clock position up to the vera montanum less time consuming but technically little more demanding it is difficult when there is a big median lobe, but not impossible once you gather more and more experience, even with a big median lobe, also you can do a bilobe vaporization. The rest of the part is just similar to a trilobe technique. It is a size independent technique near bloodless field. A technique called mushroom technique when uh, small small chips can be taken just like TURP and can be taken out with evacuator. Marcillation, if you do marcillation, it saves the operation time. Need more experience as compared to vaporization. Safety in patient, safety of this vaporization technique in patient on antiplatelet drug was concluded in this literature. Thulium laser enucleation, this is a single lobe technique which we are doing currently. Marking at the level of Bhairu Mantanam at the floor and at the roof, little proximal to the level of Bhairu Mantanam. Then the inverted u shaped incision completed on both the side. Need to master it as while enucleating, you may get real difficulty in the anterolateral position. 
once the marking is made then mechanical elevation with the tur assembly and from time to time you can cut and vaporize also and after that you get the proper plan and you start enucleating and gradually it will just peel off from the surgical capsule you can come across small bleeding points which you can do pinpoint coagulation like this now we can appreciate the peeling of the adenobank from the capsule need to take little care at the level of bladder neck because there is a chance of going subtrigonally if you are lost at that position you can go the section can be extended little laterally to avoid going subtrigonally now you can see the last part is the anterior part of enucleation the whole gland is enucleated now it is being pushed to the bladder cavity after that you have to do an enucleation this technique of enucleation needs skill and expertise this is size independent this is mechanical peeling of adenoma from the surgical capsule in this technique morcellation is a must the result comparable not to with TURP but to with open prostatectomy. In this 2018 literature, it was concluded that TULEP is easier to master than HOLEP. Nets C. Attel, who had extensive research work on laser in this 2019 literature, concluded that VEPO enucleation is size independent. In our journey so far in the last four and a half years and more than 750 thulium procedure, our sequence was vaporization, then resection, then enucleation. To conclude, various techniques of thulium laser available. Vaporization is the easiest technique. Enucleation gives maximum symptomatic relief. Transition from vaporization to enucleation is proportional to the experience of the operating surgeon. 18 patients we were who were not at all fit for general anesthesia or any kind of anesthesia, rather, we did under local anesthesia. The most common post-operative symptoms or complication was this urea. Yes, they, they deserve this smile and we need their blessings to go ahead. To conclude this uh, beautiful Sanskrit sloka, which inspires me all the time, is Puranam etieva na sadhu sarvam na chapi kadvam na vamiti vaddam santah pariksay antarayat vajante muraha parah patayanaya buddhihi. That means not all that is old is good not all that is new is bad after examining wise men know the difference dull witted are led by somebody else intelligence thank you